this lecture, we will discuss leukocytes and platelets. Your leukocytes, or your white blood cells, or your WBCs, are larger than your red blood cells, your erythrocytes, and they have very prominent nuclei, with organelles, so they are complete cells, unlike your red blood cells. Normally, you have approximately 6,000 to 9,000 white blood cells per cubic millimeter. That is drastically lower than your red blood cells. If you remember, we said in one cubic millimeter, you could have between four and six million red blood cells. So quite a big difference there. The lifespan is also quite different. Leukocytes can live anywhere from a few hours to a few days. And if you remember, your red cells can live anywhere between 100 and 120 days. Your leukocytes are good for fighting infections and helping you create antibodies. So you're part of your immune system. They also have this fancy thing they can do. Um, they adhere to the walls of your blood vessel and then they squeeze in between the endothelial cells that make up your blood vessels so they can enter the surrounding tissues. This is called diapedesis. So it's kind of like they crawl out of your blood vessels into your tissues and look for bacteria and viruses and other things that could be harming you. And all of your leukocytes fall into two categories, either granulocytes or agranulocytes. Um, it will not shock you to learn that granulocytes have granules and agranulocytes do not have granules. Um, or visible granules at least. Um, these granulocytes, the granules themselves, um, would be released when the cells themselves are activated and they have very specific function that we'll talk about here in just a second. Okay, so we've got five leukocytes that we're going to talk about. Three are granulocytes, two are agranulocytes. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to start with granulocytes. Again, these are the ones that are going to have very visible granules. They come in two varieties, or excuse me, three varieties, neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils. Okay. All of these granules, they're lysosomal granules. Okay, so if we think back, what did lysosomes do? To lyse means to break. Okay, so these are going to help us destroy things. Okay. They tend to be round. They tend to be larger than your red blood cells, and we've already mentioned that the lifespan is much shorter than your red blood cells as well. So here we go, neutrophils. This is the most common leukocyte that you have, period, not just most common granulocyte. The nice round cell is accompanied by a multi-lobed nucleus, so this dark area inside, this is the nucleus. You've got somewhere between three and five lobes of the nucleus in a neutrophil. Um, I would say this is two to three, maybe four, and this one's clearly one to three lobes to the nucleus. These tend to stain a pinkish or a purple-ish shade. Um, if you see all the little tiny dots, they're a little fuzzy, but all these little tiny dots, those are the granules that we've mentioned. Your neutrophils are phagocytes. Okay. They ingest and destroy bacterial cells and dead cells. Okay. So uh, an injured cell will release certain chemicals that will attract the neutrophils. Uh, this is called chemotaxis. So we are attracting the neutrophils to the injured cells. Um, the neutrophils will then exit the bloodstream, like we just mentioned with the diaphysis. Um, they will enter the damaged tissue. They will release those granules to help destroy all that dead and dying uh, cells and tissues that they come across. The granules, um, the contents, will directly kill bacterial cells. And those granules will also attract additional neutrophils and additional leukocytes to that site of the damaged tissue. This will also enhance the inflammatory response to speed up um, the, the tissue repair. Now, eosinophils, okay, these are bilobed nuclei. Okay. 
Okay, so now we have one, two, one, two. Okay. Um, if we are presented with a colored image, the granules tend to stain red. So these are fairly easy to identify between the two lobes and the red dots. Um, notice that the cell way up here is labeled a neutrophil instead. We've got the multi lobes again. Okay, so just for comparison. Now, eosinophils, they are also phagocytes. They just ingest different things. Okay. These are kind of weird. Um, eosinophils will ingest parasitic worms, like tapeworms, pinworms, hookworms, um, and they respond to allergic reactions. Okay, so if you have an allergy to, um, I don't know, pet dander, your eosinophils are at work if you are exposed to pet dander and you do suffer an allergic reaction. The granules themselves, the little red dots, contain enzymes and toxins okay, that are specific to the parasites that they could come in contact with. Um, and then they are also part of the inflammatory response as well that we see in, an, in the case of an infection. And then we have basophils. Okay, so this is our last granulocyte. These are the least common leukocyte, period. Okay, not just least common granulocyte, least common leukocyte, period. Um, they do have an S-shaped nucleus. Um, you probably aren't going to be able to see it. Okay. These have such large and abundant granules, all these little purple dots. Okay. There's so many of them that you probably won't even be able to see the S-shaped nucleus. So how are we going to identify these? We're going to see all of the dark granules. Okay. Now, if we're lucky enough to see the nucleus, great. But if not, we're not going to let that hold us back. Okay. Now, basophils, um, these granules contain histamine. So when basophils are activated, the granules release the histamine. Histamine is a vasodilator. Okay? Um, vasodilation is basically increasing the radius of a blood vessel, so kind of opening it up. Um, you wouldn't necessarily want to vasodilate a lot if you have some sort of um, major wound. Um, you don't want to increase your, your blood loss or anything like that. So. Um, the histamine release, the vasodilation, um, we want to do that sparingly. Alright, so our recap, our granulocytes are neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils. Okay. We're going to identify neutrophils with the three to five lobes. Okay. Eosinophils, it's going to be nice and bilobed with lots of red granules. And our basophils, we're going to have so many granules that it's probably hard to see our nucleus. Now, our second category, agranulocytes, we have two options, okay? We've got lymphocytes. So our agranulocytes are lymphocytes and monocytes. They have no vis visible granules in the cytoplasm. Um, and these are fairly easy to identify visually. So let's get started. Okay, so your lymphocytes come in two varieties. Now we aren't, aren't really going to be able to visually distinguish a B lymphocyte or a B cell from a T lymphocyte or a T cell. So just visually a lymphocyte is a lymphocyte. Okay? And this is, this is a lymphocyte. These are pretty easy to spot. It is basically just one giant nucleus with no visible granules. So these, these are pretty easy to identify. Okay? Now not visually, okay, we do need to distinguish. A B cell is good for producing antibodies, okay, and we will cover antibodies in so much more detail um, a little bit later. So antibodies um, are designed to help bind and remove antigens from tissues. So antigens are um, anything that the body thinks shouldn't be there, so we want to remove it. So each population of B cell secretes antibodies that are specific to a unique antigen. So you have lots of antigens, so we need lots of antibodies. Okay? Now T lymphocytes, T cells are a good bit different. They do not produce antibodies. Okay? They 
instead will target and destroy abnormal body cells. Okay. So T cells are a little bit more destructive. Um, antibodies and T cell receptor cells both bind to only one unique antigen based on the structure, the shape of the antigen. So T lymphocytes um, are also very specific uh, with regards to what they will destroy. Okay, so we have uh, lots of different types of T cells as well. Now B cells and T cells are both created in your red bone marrow, but they don't all mature there. Okay, so B cells do mature in your bone marrow. So B cells, bone marrow, do, 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 do. T cells mature in your thymus. Mm, B cells, bone marrow, T cells, thymus. Uh, not your thyroid. All right, don't trip up, it's your thymus. Okay. Now, last but not least, we have our monocytes. Okay. This is the largest leukocyte that you have. Okay. But visually, we are going to be able to recognize this because of the U-shaped or the kidney-shaped nucleus. So we've got this nice U. Um, if you want to turn around, you could say it's a C instead of a U. I mean, that's fine. But it's one nice continuous nucleus. Now we're not going to confuse this with an eosinophil that has bilobed nuclei. Okay, So this is all one nice continuous piece. If you go back and look at pictures of eosinophils, um, the bilobed nucleus um, looks just a little bit different here. And you'll notice that this does not stain red like a uh, an eosinophil either. Okay, So monocytes, they're the largest leukocytes, but they don't live in your blood vessels very long. They will exit their capillaries. Remember, we talked about diapedesis. They will enter into the tissues where they become macrophages. Ooh, okay. So macrophages are, they're phagocytes, they're phages. Okay. They ingest dead cells, dying cells, bacteria, antigens, um, cellular debris. It, they're hungry. They just like to eat. Okay. We don't judge them. They also help you activate other parts of your immune system. Um, so basically, they will eat or phagocyte, phagos, phagocyte, that's hard to say, um, an antigen, and then they will quote unquote present that to other parts of your immune system, other leukocytes. And it basically says, hey, if you see this antigen that I just destroyed, um, if you come across it, you should destroy it too. Okay, so they help, they're helpers. So our view of agranulocytes, we've got lymphocytes. Visually, we've got that giant, darkly stained nucleus that takes up most of the cell. And then the monocyte, visually, we've got that nice U-shaped or kidney-shaped nucleus. Again, no visual, uh, visible granules in either of these cells. Now, how to remember how many of these we, got, we have. We have a look at this. Never let monkeys eat bananas which is kind of mean because monkeys really like bananas. But our most numerous is our neutrophils, our least numerous is our basophils, and so forth. So never let monkeys eat bananas. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, platelets, and then we're done. Okay, so platelets, also known as thrombocytes, are small cell fragments. Okay, they do not have nuclear organelles either, so they are not a full cell either. Okay. They're just a part of a cell. So when you, how do we create platelets? When you take a megakaryocyte okay, uh, from your bone marrow and you basically blow it up, you rupture it. Okay. The megakaryocyte, uh, it's multinucleated. So once you blow it up, all the little parts inside of a megakaryocyte become individual platelets. So if we remember all these tiny little purple dots, those are our platelets. They live for about 10 days-ish. Um, and we have more platelets than we do white blood cells, but still quite less than what we do red cells. So in that cu uh, cubic millimeter that we keep talking about, that really tiny blood sample, we have between 150,000 and 350,000 platelets. Okay. Um, platelets, most people know, are involved in blood clotting, which we call hemostasis. And we'll go into more detail about hemostasis in, in a different lecture. 
So just a nice um, microscopic image of a red cell, a white cell, and a platelet. Um, and from this angle, it's, it's hard to tell that this white cell is a little bit bigger. Uh, it's just the angle of the image. And then just a recap. Now you can see um, each leukocyte compared to another. Please be prepared to both visually identify these cells as well as be able to identify them from a description. And that concludes our discussion on leukocytes and platelets.